Hi, I'm Britt Hammer, and welcome to this week's free image review at BPSOP. I teach Celebrate Your Life in Beautiful Images and Amazing Travel Photos Made Easy. So let's get started. These are the images we're going to be looking at in this review, and we're going to start with Madrid at Night. So Michael, beautiful image. Uh, the way you got the reflections in all of these windows is absolutely stunning. Uh, really, really brilliant capture. Can't compliment you enough. Um, so now, uh, one thing I'd like to do is show you some ideas of what you can do based on this image. And the first thing is when I look at architecture, uh, and when I'm photographing architecture, I try to be either completely perpendicular to the site that I'm photographing, or to be very obviously on an angle. And so it looks like you're either uh, you're not totally square on and you're not totally on an angle either so what happens is you get a little bit of perspective but that's okay um, what we can do and to make this a little bit better is we can just pick this uh, horizontal line in the middle here and see what happens if we straighten it just a little bit so do you see how this tiny little change just making this horizontal line here horizontal, how that improves it already, just, just by doing that one thing. So what I wanted to show you is um, something that I like to do in my classes is to show other ideas of what you might do. So I'm going to make a duplicate of the one that I just straightened, and I wanted to show you another idea for framing. Uh, sometimes it's kind of fun. So it's one thing I notice is we've got some negative space here on this side of the windows, but these are not. These, uh, the frame goes through the middle of this window. So what I'm wondering is, if I just stick with your original aspect ratio, what happens if, um, and this is not for the sake of cropping, uh, but this is all for the sake of um, seeing what you can get in your shot, what happens if Actually, let me just not constrain for a second. What happens if you were to play with the negative space on the, the left side of these images and on the right here? And let's see if I can go a little bit further. And try to make, if you wanted to make a little bit more of a symmetric uh, composition. Now, granted, it's a little difficult because we're not square to the windows. But do you see how already... And let me go back to your original image and show you the three variations side by side. So here's your original. This is the straightened, which I'm now going to let go of. And then we have another version where uh, these windows are no longer part of it because what we have is a more or less symmetric composition. The question is if you like it or not. And if the answer is no, you don't like this, that's totally fine. Uh, what you can also do if you wanted is to play with which images are in, uh, which uh, uh, bits are in your image and which are not. So for instance, this cable here may or may not distract you. So you may want to choose different, Im uh, different windows based on that. Um, this light fixture might also distract you or it might not. So for example, what you could do if you wanted to was also just to take these windows at the top. So again, it just comes down to a creative decision, uh, what you like or what you don't like. But you did a really nice job, just the fact that you captured uh, all those beautiful reflections and that you're juxtaposing the crazy colors and patterns against what's a very classic building. It's really nicely done, so well done. Next we have this beautiful image called Prayers. And it's so wonderful that you caught this moment. Um, photographing people, especially when there's action going on, uh, is always a bit of a challenge. And so it comes down to, um, I think, framing. And so one of the things that's so beautiful is the look on his face and how he's holding his hands. Uh, he's in prayer. And he's. this, to me, is the area that's very much the interest. Um, yes, the reflection is also beautiful, 
and how you have framed him so that uh, you've got him just below the hip and then you've got his head at the top of the frame so he we feel very intimate he feels he's filling the frame very nicely so one thing that I wonder um, this is just a suggestion it's an idea and it's a creative suggestion um, because usually I don't focus so much on the technical on which lenses you use and which aperture etc I'm more interested in the story so what I'm wondering is, um, would it have been possible to have more negative space in front of him so that uh, he's facing towards something? Because right now, he's if you see this left side of the frame as like a wall, he almost is praying into the wall. So, for example, um, what I'm going to try to do, and I'm in Aperture right now, so I can't add to your image, but I'm going to see if I can show you a mock-up of what I mean. So I'm wondering if, for example, actually I need to, um, so whatever I take away at the left, I would add, or add, whatever I take away at the right, I would suggest to add um, in front of him. So for example, if you wanted to, what you could do is push the back of his arm down through the elbow and through the shoulder out of the frame and then push that space that I just cut off put it to the left so that he's facing towards something um, now granted what some of what you really enjoyed was this beautiful reflection and so my question to you is which is more important? Um, is it the man pray praying or is it the reflection? Um, so that's one question I have for you. Another variation, uh, if you wanted to, is to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to keep the version side by side. Um, another option, and sometimes we don't think about these things as creative options. Um, and if I remember correctly, in your comments, you did not uh, crop. This is exactly how it was in the frame. You didn't crop or do anything. So what I'm wondering is, uh, you can change the the meaning of the story based on what you keep in the frame and what not. So what I've just done is crop to a square. I've kept the full resolution at the width. What I have taken off is at the top and the bottom. And so this is an image within your image that if you wanted to, it's a different story. Uh, let me just let go of this one. It is a completely different story. It's like a detail shot within your beautiful image. And so now it's about uh, his face and his hands. And I'm just gonna move this down to see what happens if we don't include, um, let's see if I can, now it's gonna be a square. Now it's just about his hands, and we get a little bit of his beard. We've taken his face off, so he's, uh, he's not recognizable. But now it's more about the hands. And so I show you these just to see what you like and what you don't like, because my goal is to um, not to tell you what to do, but to show you different ideas to see if you like them, to help you move in the direction that you're looking to move. So let me just go back and... Actually, take that one away and put the crop back towards the top. Um, just go through, show a little bit of his hair. And now imagine, so we have these versions on the left is your original. This second one, imagine there's more negative space in front of him. And imagine then that you used the one with the negative space in front of him so that the, the crop still goes through his arm here. But now it's about his hands. And then this one is about his face and his hands. So really, my point in showing you this is just, um, it's not so much an image review, but it's an idea of what you might also do to tell your story. So, but you did a beautiful, beautiful job. So these are just some ideas for you to think about. And these are the types of things we look at in my classes. This is the next image that we're looking at. And I love black and white images. I especially love abstract images. So thank you for submitting this. 
uh, we've got these forks that are intersecting. One of the things that I like to do is to hold my hand over the top, bottom, and the sides of the frame to see how that changes the image. And so um, I love the image the way it is, full stop. So that is just one thing. But the thing that I wanted to show you to see if you like it, uh, just to kind of get you thinking, is what if, for example, and this is not meant to be a lesson in cropping, it is meant to be a lesson, if anything, in framing, um, to see what happens if, for example, I push this bit out of frame. Does it tighten it? It changes the emphasis a little bit. And so I find that based on these little micro, these little details of what we leave out of the frame, it changes the emphasis, right? For me, it, this is the, the one thing that, it's just where my eye goes from the very beginning. I, I look here, I don't look at the intersecting tines. Um, and that's mainly because the eye goes for the area of the highest contrast, so where the black and the whites are, right? I don't notice the intersecting tines so much because my eye, with my vision, the way I see, this is largely the same, this area. It's, it's all kind of in the, the gray tones. But this area is where I see a big blotch of black and of white. Here I see a blotch of black and white. And then the, the contrast isn't quite as heavy in this area. So what you, if you want to go with post-processing as you know, the way to go, I would probably uh, maybe push away your contrast, you know, make a bigger contrast in this area and tone down this area here unless you want the eye to go there. But I think it's a really interesting image, so I'm glad you submitted that. Next we have a beautiful image from Yosemite, which is, I think it, you said it was three images merged, um, and after getting up at a very, very early hour to take some images and being disappointed. Um, you know, you came back with something stunning, just the fact that you merged these images, really beautiful. And if I don't look at any of the technical anything, I would just say this is a photo that definitely moves me. Um, I'm not one to look at technical things and lenses that just... I'm someone who likes to look at uh, emotional content. And so the thing that I notice beautiful, the sun with the starburst coming off, and then we've got like all these gradients, if you will, of sun that's washing down on the valley, and it's really interesting. And what I'm noticing is there's actually some beautiful images within your image, and so we're just going to wing it here, and that's something that I do in my classes. Um, I don't see it so much as an image critique as uh, an idea brainstorming session. One thing that's so beautiful is if you just hold your hand on the left side of the image like to here, that already is a beautiful beautiful image by itself. Um, if you also look at the left side of the image that's also really pretty. So let's just see what I'm talking about. Oops. So, for example, I'm just going to go to square just to see what we end up with. So, for example, this it's not a landscape. What I'm looking to do is see what other images are within your image. Your image is perfect the way it is um, from an emotional point of view. I'm sure if you show the image to 10 people, each of those 10 people will find something to say about it. Um, I'm an artist, and so my whole thing is I want the artist, in this case you, to feel good about your work and show you ideas of what you might also do but ultimately, you're the artist and you know what's right. And it's not for me to tell you that you did it wrong because as far as I'm concerned, it's, uh, there's no such thing as wrong. But this is an idea for you. Uh, if it's something that speaks to you, you might prefer also landscapes. So, 
for example, you might prefer a 16 by 9 crop to take away, for example, some of the, uh, the green here because the, to me it's the sun and the rays. That's what's really the, the subject. So you might consider, for example, um, if you have more images going to a pano. So there are three versions for you. Your original one, which is gorgeous, uh, a square which tells a different story, and then a 9 by 16, which you could, in theory, also build into a pano if you have um, other shots to the left and right uh, from that scene where you're at. I always encourage you to take um, panos. Panos are really wonderful to have, um, especially if you're going to be stacking them. Last but not least, we have an ICM shot. Fabulous. Love ICM. So if I remember correctly, uh, you've got two images that were merged, um, one where it was static, and then you moved the camera slightly. So you end up with this beautiful uh, ICM shot. I personally love the colors. I love the fun aspect of it and um, how playful it is. So one of the things that I'd like to, because there isn't anything I would change in that respect, but I did want to show you uh, an idea of what you might consider. So I'm wondering, for example, um, I like to play with aspect ratios and with my framing. And so what I'm looking at is how does the story change if, for example, you have it's more or less asymmetric so that there's a same amount of negative space at the top and bottom. And then if we look at this pink macaroon and this pink macaroon, so now we've got a little bit more negative space to the left, but that's okay because it's like they're rolling in out of the frame towards the right. So my question to you is, does the attention go more to the macaroons on the image on the right or the one on the left? Because what I'm noticing is there's a lot more of the darker yellow than there is of the lighter yellow underneath. So my question to you is, would you want to have this yellow where it goes from light to dark? Would you want that in the center and to play with the, um, to play with the aspect ratio? That would be the one thing that I would like you to think about. So there you have it. Really nicely done though. Really, really like that. It's very fun. So there you have it. It's not your traditional image review, but this is how I work with students in my class. We look heavily at composition and story. So I hope to see you in class. Bye.